Welcome to the World of Horror podcast. I'm Mom. And I'm Beck. And this is the podcast where we share our love of international horror. Fear is universal, but we are not afraid of subtitles. A disclaimer, the thoughts and opinions expressed are ours only. We have no credentials of any kind. We just like horror and enjoy discussing international horror movies. Also, these discussions will include spoilers. You have been warned. This week, we watched the 2003 Japanese cell phone horror film, One Miss Call, and the 2008 American remake of the same name. Well, hoes, we're going to move on to our next segment, Mom and Mac Chat. Hi, Mac. How's it going? Good, Mom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. That's good. Um, I mentioned it on the mini. A friend of mine died on February 20th. And today, as we're recording, it's March 3rd, so it hasn't been very long. Um, I haven't had that many people in my life die. Um, So people tell me I am reacting normally. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I don't like it. Let me just say, I don't like it when people I love die. So my sleep got all fucked up. My food got all fucked up. Um, I couldn't concentrate on anything for about two weeks. But um, I think I'm getting a little bit back on track. And um, it's just that every once in a while something will hit me in the heart. And um, I just think that's going to go on for a while. So... Uh, yeah. But I love him. He was a great guy. He touched a lot of people in a positive way. He was a great teacher, great colleague, and um, I miss him a lot. How are you doing? I am doing okay as well. Um, I feel like, well, I feel like I've said this multiple times, and also it's a, it's, it's a way a lot of people have been feeling, I'm just like so burnt out. Like, I, <laughs> I I actually think, though, I might be on the up and up now, but I'm coming up from what was uh, not great. But it, it, and it wasn't even, you know, I really don't have, I'm a very privileged person in terms of like, I don't really have a lot of external worries in my life at the moment besides pandemic and what have you. But um, yeah, like... Maybe it was the weather or something because it was pretty rainy, but it was just like exhausting to just be like, I'm still tired. I'm still like, I don't want to do anything. I feel like listless and stuff uh, because I like to feel productive. Um, But this weekend, or I should say this last weekend, had like cleaned a whole bunch of stuff, moved a whole bunch of furniture around, and I just felt like, haven't done my laundry yet. But baby steps. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I'm, I'm wicked excited because I just got an oh, iPad. Oh, yeah. You, you were telling me about this. I um, It's my baby. Haven't really gotten to play with it much because I haven't even changed the wallpaper. It's still the basic one. Uh, because <laughs> last night I was putting the screen protector on because I bought this like plexiglass thing. Because, okay, these things are way too expensive. Like this is too... If I hadn't got my tax return, no. Um, Because when I looked, I was like, maybe they're like 300. I don't know. No. That was stupid of me to think. And at that point, I was like, that would be a lot of money. Oh, how about $1,000? Holy shit. They're so, like, what? And for what? Okay. They are great. (laughs) But it's still like, And I tried to buy it. This has become a long story, but you'll just have to listen to it. I tried to buy it through my Verizon account because they were like, okay, we'll do layaway. And I was like, okay, $40 a month? Oh, that that just feels a lot better than $1,000 right now. And they were like, you need to get data for it. So it'll actually be another $50 added for the rest of your life. I was like, can I not just buy a product for you? And then the audacity... (laughs) Some man who works in the store in Garner, North Carolina was like, are you still, are you still interested in buying that? Like, do you want to come into the store? No. Best Buy already got me. Okay. So piss off. 
<laughs> but um, this thing is crazy because if you just like open it. Yeah, you are like bathed in light, like a yeah, like a this fucking true. angel. It just like <laughs> emanates. Ah, like, ah. <laughs> it it just unlocks because of my face. Except it doesn't know me when I'm wearing a mask yet. Come on, mm. Apple. We've been in Get quarantine together, for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Get your shit together, Apple. God. So yeah, I now, guess you could say I'm I'm doing good actually. I'm gonna say. And you said that you thought that would help you maybe do more art in the future. Yes. Too. Yes. I got um an Apple pencil and procreate um because it's really easy to draw and I mean it's a computer, so I mean, you can you can do it with watercolor, and like, it's so much more advanced. Th this is just silly of me to not realize this, but like, it just is true that with the coming years, they've just made technology is just better than what I thought it was, because mm. you can just take a brush, and it's just like it looks just like watercolor, like it's crazy. And I obviously I still believe in the art of doing, you know it freehand and like natural that's always going to have like a very special poignant place in the world of art for me who is lazy and wants to just sit on my couch and play with watercolors it's like now i can do that and like mm. so yeah i've been wanting this for like over a year but i was like Ugh, it's so much money i can't i can't justify but then uncle sam was like here you go this is uh -huh. yours yeah oh that's great um, yeah, I was just telling Cindy, Andy's mom, earlier, mm -hmm. um, that one thing I've learned from this year of quarantine is that doing things that are creative is a lot more important to me than my job. And I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I threw everything. I threw my whole self into my job up to this point. Um, and I'm not going to do that anymore because it's more important to me to do something w w that's creative, that creates something, um, than my job. So that was really an interesting insight. And when I do take the time to do that, my day is better. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that 100%. Like I, sometimes I used to think like if I would ever feel listless in school or like, or at my job, you know, I feel like sometimes you can internalize that because I mean, especially our culture is just one of so much like productive, productive, you cannot sleep, you have to work forever. Um, and so you can just kind of feel, I at least would feel like I'm just like not great because like, I can't get excited to do my job mm, and like, mm -hmm. oh no. And then I realized like, oh, well I do get excited and like put a lot of really hard work and time and like really good productive energy into things that like actually make me happy. So I should just like focus on that a lot. Um, it makes sense that I don't want to give myself to my job because uh, why? <laughs> or at least my job is not one that I'm passionate about. I don't help anybody in the world. Or it's, I don't care. You know, it's like anytime that they have like a big talk, I hope nobody from my job listens. Anytime that they have a really, I know. They, they, <laughs> listen, they, they could see, I would tell this to them and I've literally said to them, I've been like, I don't like, I don't care what this company does. I just need to get a paycheck. Thank you. Um, I will do my job and then leave. Um, anytime that they have any like ideation, like, Ooh, <laughs> wouldn't it be amazing if we, you know, did something I'm like, Oh my God, please kill me. Like I like, it's not even that I dislike it. It's just, I don't care. Yeah. I don't. Well, yeah. I mean, I teach. And, um, so there's the, there can be creativity obviously in that. Um, and I have put a lot of work this last like five years into creating these really interactive online courses. And of course I haven't been in the classroom for a year, but, um, yeah, so I've done a whole lot of work um, on these courses, and I do enjoy that. But there are other things I think that are important and valuable, and I guess I'm grateful <laughs> to have learned this <laughs> lesson because um, it's not like I was unhappy or un unfulfilled. It's just now there's like another element to my life mm -hmm. that I can um, learn more about. So that's exciting. Yeah, I can tell how passionate you are about 
uh, the Wohos world of horror mosaicing. Just like I feel like when you really are like into something, you really like um, you take like a lot of like time for it, which is really good. Like I feel like you really like soak up and like just do stuff that makes you happy. I've always admired that about you. Oh, thanks, Mac. That's really nice to hear. Uh, well, I started doing mosaics when I got separated from my husband for the last time, and I taught myself how to do them. And uh, when I walk into my art studio, I just feel more awake, and more alive, and um, excited. And um, yeah, there are other parts of my life I don't have that sensation. So I think I ought to cultivate that. And um, I do have a lot of fun with this podcast. Um, even though I feel like I just want it to be like amazing and terrific and always it is fantastic. Yeah, I guess it is. Um, I mean, (laughs) (laughs) there's something, okay. This is an important lesson to, I feel like anyone who is a content creator of any sort is that, and, and when you're specifically dealing with like the thing that you're creating is something to do with you like here you know doing something is that Mm -hmm. the people who enjoy you they enjoy you for things that you don't even realize people could enjoy you for you know because uh, like you see things through your just like specific you know viewpoint and so you and, and you are gonna notice or like put in expectations of what you think it should be and then at the end of the day, you'll have somebody watch it and be like, this was amazing. I loved it. And you're like, mm. oh, okay. You know, and oh. I feel like if you overthink it more, that's almost, yeah. That reminds me, I this doesn't have to, to do with horror, but I have a recommendation if you haven't seen it. The Billie Eilish documentary called The World's a Little Blurry. Um, it is on Apple TV and I don't know if it's other places, but she's so hard on herself um she's such a perfectionist and she reminded me of me now she's a genius i wouldn't claim to be a genius (laughs) but we both had a lot of suicidal thoughts in adolescence and when i heard her talk about that it just really hit me it just really like took me back to that time and it's hard when you're a teenager because you don't have the perspective of knowing that you know, things are going to be different, but you know, that you have when you're 52 years old or whatever, but, um, it's great. The crew followed her for for like, from when she was like 15 to 18. And, um, I heard her interviewed the other day and she was just saying that she always wants, she never wants to have a bad moment in public because when she's interacting with people, that's their moment. Oh. You know, so she understands like her like power um, and she takes a lot of responsibility for that. And at 19 years old, I just think that's that's wild. quite amazing. Yeah. Um, but one thing I didn't know, which is a delight, is that she is like this mega fan of Justin Bieber. What? Yeah. Would you have ever <laughs> guessed that? No. Yeah, so I would really recommend the the film. It's it's pretty good. It, it's still kind of kicking around in my head. So, mm-hmm. but speaking of films, I wanted to recap our favorites of the year so far. So you told oh, me yeah. in January your favorite film from January that you watched was Pop Star. Will you still stand by that? Yes. Okay. Uh, for January. <laughs> for January, <laughs> and mine was Possessor. And I am going to still stand by that. Of course. And for February, um, I'm choosing Only Lovers Left Alive, which is a vampire movie that we discussed on the last mini, in part, and along with some other movies. But what would you say was your favorite movie from last month? Space Sweepers. Oh, yeah. It's on Netflix, y'all. Go to Netflix. Watch Space Sweepers. There is a trans robot. There is uh, times that will make you cry. Um, there, uh, um, is a dystopian stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I just love that movie. Yeah, it was really, I really liked it a lot. I had no idea what to expect, but, um, Korean 
science fiction, but I mean, that limits it. It's really. Um, it's really multicultural, I feel like. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I Well, because, um, <laughs> sorry, this is like totally not on topic, but I really hate when people think about the future and they think that there's just going to be one homogenized culture and language or stuff. I just think that's so, I don't know, reductive and like really stupid. Whereas in Space Sweepers, like they just, of course, it's the future. They have these like Bluetooth headsets where they can just talk to anybody in any language. And it's like, that's great. Like, make that now, please. Um, I just like yeah. that. And it's just everybody, They it's kind of one large a lot, a lot of people intermingling because it's more about space than like any sort of political place on Earth. But everybody's still got their own distinct like cultures and stuff. It's very neat. Cool. Good recommendation. So I wanted to finish tonight with What Has Maxine, the Supernatural slash Tech Edition. This is a list that I just straight up stole from <laughs> ScreenRant.com. And let's just go through the list. The followers. Yes. What did Bad. you think of it? You didn't like did it? Did not like it. Hated it. Were you upset by the cult aspect of it? Um at that point, I don't I don't think that upset me because I was already so like, I hate this. Mm-hmm. What what more could it could it add? It just felt like an incel wrote it. Oh. Hot take. I didn't Hot, might be a hot take. I didn't see it that way. Um, so it's basically these uh, influencers. The first half of the movie is about these influencers, a uh, really attractive woman and a man, and they meet. And then the second part is about these documentary, I guess, incels, right? A crew of two guys um, who want to show how easy it is to find someone in the real world when they put their whole life on the internet. Um, and one of these guys is sort of a innocent figure and the other one is talking okay. about how he wants to kill this couple. But is the other guy innocent? Cause also the other guy is obsessed with the woman. Yeah, he has he is. A, like a total parasocial relationship where he's just like, Oh my God, she like looks like he just wants to get in a way. I feel like he really wants to get close to her. But yeah, the other guy is a complete weirdo. I don't know that word parasocial. Is that a word in use? Oh, mom, mm. this is this is um, a new buzzword, but I think it is real. Mm. Um, it's discussed a lot uh, in Twitch communities um, because there's this I, <laughs> there's this idea of the parasocial relationship, which is, I mean, it has existed obviously um, even before streaming or any sort of influencer thing, but now since a lot of like people get famous and like they are communicating directly with like their community and stuff. Like even like, you know, super duper huge. I mean, like the biggest of influencers or, or TikTokers or, or streamers, um, their young kids especially get just very, they think that they are friends with this person, you know? Right. And um, it can lead you, you know, it, like it even can lead sometimes to like, you know how kids like will act up in class just because any attention is okay attention. Like mm. the, it happens in these streams too of like, I actually had somebody like this recently and I had to ban them. Um, and I felt bad because I think that they are a minor. I couldn't completely tell. But just, you know, sometimes from the way somebody talks, you're like, you're a child. Um, and they would just like, it wouldn't even be like, offensive things but they would just spam things just so that like i would say like hey you you're a person in this world saying this thing but it's like you're it's not on topic at all like it yeah so basically it can be yeah that you really are invested like oh i gotta i gotta give them money i i love them Mm, you know mm -hmm. and obviously that like can lead to it's troubling for both sides obviously So in the followers, I guess the big twist is that, you know, you think it's just a story between these two groups of people, but then there's a third group, which is a cult. And I, that's where I tuned out because uh, (laughs) there's a way better version of that in a movie Mm -hmm. called Kill List. Um, 
with Michael Smiley. Have you seen yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Well, I watched that recently. I love that movie. That's a great yeah. movie. Yeah. Phenomenal. So uh, take a seat. Followers, Skip it. Because Kill List does it a lot better. Okay. Girl House 2014. I don't think so. Me neither. Like Share Follow 27. <laughs> no, but what a great name. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't either. <laughs> Ratter, Ratter, 2015. No. I'm going to be honest. I do like technology-related horror, but so many of them are such hot pieces of garbage. So mm -hmm. I, I actually do use like a 10-foot pole. Well, part of, you know, I was saying that I couldn't really focus or concentrate a lot. I did consume a lot of content. <laughs> <laughs> By that, I mean I was sitting on my ass and looking at a television screen. So um, I watched Bad Match from 2017, which is good. You Have you seen it? No. Yeah, no. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's fine. It, there is a twist. Um, I saw the twist, mm -hmm. but. Um, of course. I, that's kind of my deal. Um, but yeah, I would recommend it. The acting's pretty good. It, I mean, it has an obsessive girl uh, trope, but that's not the end of the story. So I would recommend that one. How about Cam 2018? Yes. Yeah. Not my fave. I really do like, but though, like it, all of it. the set pieces she did. Like this, like the, mm -hmm. like she did all these really cool things with like, um, all of her different like streams and stuff. I like, I really like that. That almost makes me give it all the stars just because that was really interesting to watch and pretty. But I thought the story was stupid. I mean, I guess, you know, I've never seen that world. And so, I mean, I'm sort of like, sort of new of it peripherally, but just, the, yeah, the level of detail um, that the cam girls would go yeah. into. Um, yeah, real interesting. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it takes a weird turn at the end, and I'm not really sure I liked it, but, you know. Yeah, me neither. I guess I'd, like, I'd recommend it. I like, like, yeah, the first 25 to 30 minutes, you'll be like, okay, and then you'll quickly be like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I liked it more than you did, but um, I think that's fair. Um, Ingrid Goes West. Yes. Me and Ellen I that. loved it. I loved I this it. movie. Love this movie. I loved it. Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. Come on. It's no joke. She's great. Like, yeah, she's amazing. She's fucking, she does so much. There are like, like, she'll be like walking somewhere and she'll do like three or four funny little things with her yeah. body and her face. And she's just fucking She throws amazing. herself into a role. Like, I just feel like she, she just does. eats up the camera. Um, yeah, she. it's kind of a tough watch, but she's great. Um, and then in um, What You Call It, at Ingrid Goes West, we have your boyfriend, Chad Russell. <laughs> Not Chad Russell. Wy Wyatt Russell. <laughs> Who's Chad Russell? Who? I don't know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Russell, who are you? Call us up. Get in touch. <laughs> Get in touch. Okay. <laughs> also, Elizabeth Olsen. Also, I know. Uh, she's great. Amazing. Yeah, she she played so, that character so well. Oh, so good. <sighs> so big recommend on that one. I want to watch it again. All right, Unfriended, twenty fourteen. Yes, <laughs> of course. Saw that one in theaters. Of course, you did? I did. Yes, <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> it's good. I, I mean, like, okay, Unfriended walked so the host could run. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. All right, Don't Hang Up, 2016. Yes, but I, I do not remember it, but I know I watched it. Yeah, I'd recommend it. I mean... It, the, it, the premise is these prank callers... Uh, call, <laughs> yeah, these prank <laughs> callers. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> they call people. The end. Goodbye. Um, no, they call people, and um, someone is unhappy with that, and you know, hijinks ensue. 
The Den, 2013. I could write um, a whole essay on why I love The Den. <laughs> I think I like that movie more than anyone else on this planet. Like, I'm not saying that other people dislike it, but I think it's way better than it is. <laughs> No, I disagree. I I think it's really good. Oh, okay, I think okay. it's so good. smart. And um, I, okay, this is how dumb I am. Um, <laughs> I didn't even realize there was more than one killer until <gasps> that was revealed. Yeah. Uh, okay. So already I'm like, what? <laughs> but the final shot of the movie, which I will not spoil, even though. There will be spoilers. I won't spoil this one because I've never seen that before. And it really just sort of sums up the culture that we live in. Um, talking about cam girls and talking about, you know, watching women online um, and the exploitation to a level that you haven't even thought about yet. Um, oh, so good. So good. <laughs> Great film. Film. I'm so glad you recommended that because I was just, I never would have watched that on my yeah. own, but it's a good one. And whoa, host, today we have a very special guest, a returning guest. Uh, so, Andy. Yeah. I know I know that you're a teacher. Yes. Oh. And you teach math. Yes, high school level. And so in North Carolina, you jumped to the top of the available list and got your shot. How did it go? Yes. So yeah, the way we're doing it in North Carolina, I guess, is in like levels. Because the first was the first responders and the medical professionals. And then I think after that was people over the age of 65 or nursing home patients and now we have teachers and things of that sort so the way we did it is i just went to the public randolph county public health station, and it was literally a drive-through vaccination oh nice where they just had it in stations there was a lady walking up and down the aisle of cars with a clipboard where you filled out a bunch of you know are you allergic to anything kind of information <laughs> uh that during uh drive-through vaccination they just do it in the car, and then they have you sit in a parking lot for like 15 minutes to make sure you don't have any weird reactions. Mm -hmm. And then you just go about your day, and they tell you to come back in three weeks. So that's what I'll be doing. Do you know which one you got? Yeah, it was the Pfizer one. Okay. And yes. did you have any kind of reaction to it? No, nothing more than just a sore arm the next day. But, you know, just like I do every time I get a flu shot, nothing out of the ordinary. Cool. Great. Yeah, I have an appointment for Saturday. I'm very excited. Good for you. Nothing. Well, Greensboro and Chicago are the um, first like mega vaccine vaccination oh. sites. So nice. um, they they were going to start on the tenth, but they're starting um, on the sixth, I guess. So uh, I'll probably be with a whole bunch of people, but that's okay. Um, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just excited <laughs> sure to set, set aside a lot of time. Just well, up. hopefully it'll start speeding up a little more now. Um, yes, that is I true. hope so. My, I just went to the website and didn't take the first okay. appointment I wanted wasn't available. So I just went down like three hours and that one was so. And Mac, you told me that uh, you are now classed as an essential frontline worker. Yes. Uh, nice. But then when I asked the HR lady, I was like, oh, Walgreens says I need to like show a uh, work ID. And she was like, I don't know anything about that. Um, so she was not much help, but oh. I have a coworker who just was like, it's fine. Go to Walgreens, make your appointment. And he got his, he got a shot today. Um, but I, I guess I got, I got in the game too late. Cause when I tried to set up my own appointment, it was like, no, not for the next mm. three days. No, but I'm fine with waiting. Well, like yeah. a week. I, I want to get it ASAP, obviously, but. So what are we going to do when we're all double vaccinated and we're able to be around each other again? <laughs> well, all I do know is I was telling some friends of mine, I'll probably keep wearing a mask. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as I've thought it through. Though. <laughs> do you want to take a trip, Andy? Um, my sister just went to Florida um, because she's been double vaccinated for a long time. Yeah. I don't know. A friend wanted her to drive a car back. 
So she jumped on a plane and then she went down to Florida and then she drove this car back. Libby, Just love you, mean it. You're a weirdo. <laughs> That's a weird <laughs> thing to do. Why? She is been cooped up for a year like all of us and she had an opportunity to help somebody out so i just feel like i would never go that far for anybody so that's really nice (laughs) what what yes you would 12 hours like so long to drive or no you fly well no then you drive back yeah i wouldn't do it okay (laughs) good good to know (laughs) i'm just kidding yeah (laughs) <laughs> I'm just looking forward to being able to play Magic the Gathering tournaments again. That's all I want. Oh, <laughs> you're really into that, right, Indy? That's kind yes. of your deal. I'm, I'm climbing the the ladder online right now. I'm Ooh. sure Mac knows all about that. Hell yeah! Because yeah. you're really good at it, right? Well, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, according I, to I your won, mom, I you are. Like a, I won like 150 bucks once. Okay, well, hey, so you're professional. That's good. <laughs> you're you're professional. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> what about you, Mac? What are you gonna do? Hmm. Uh, I just want to see people visit my mom. Visit my mom, who I love. <laughs> mom, good you're answer. actually lucky because uh, you're like the only person besides Alan that I've seen in person. So um, yeah. you you are in a small group. Um, so yeah, I, I guess it's just seeing friends face to face once again. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, I'm in the same yeah. boat. Coworkers and family are the only people I've seen in person for a year and a half now, almost. It ain't yeah. great. <laughs> or, and also I want to take a trip. I want to, I need a change of scenery. Um, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. I've been driving to work and then back home for too long. <laughs> yep. Uh, Mac, you've been talking about that for a couple of weeks. Do you get, do you have anything planned? We didn't. I forgot. Like I said, oh, we'll plan it over the weekend. <laughs> and then Monday came, and I was like, next weekend. And then that Monday came, and I was like, I really got to write this down. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys were thinking about like a camping trip or a trip to the beach or something. Not camping. Log cabin. Maybe glamping. I cannot camp. <laughs> glamping. Yeah. That's so funny. When we went camping in college, not... we didn't even bring any tents. We just brought hammocks and that's it. <laughs> oh my gosh. We didn't that's have a pretty tent. Hardcore. We didn't have a tent. I went to college in the mountains. We didn't they... have any tents. I respect <laughs> because I could not do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, my boyfriend has like a camper thing, RV thing. So yeah. that, that's my speed. I like that. Why don't we get into it? The screenplay is by Minako Daira, and it's based on Chakushin Ari by Yasushi Akimoto. And it stars... Ko she, sorry, Ko Shibasaki, who plays Yumi, and Renji Ishibashi, who plays Isako Motomiya, the detective. Here's some trivia. The film was followed up by a sequel, One Miss Call 2, One Miss Call, a 10 episode Japanese television drama, and One Miss Call Final. A few scenes in the film are meant to be an homage to other J horror classics, including Yumi Racing Against Time to discover the secret of the curse before she's scheduled to die from Ringo. The ghostly child hiding in the apartment cupboard is inspired by <laughs> Juan the Grudge. The scene featuring an old residential building with a water tank on the roof, which then cuts to a shot of characters ascending in an elevator, is an homage to dark water. And the premise of ghosts terrorizing the lives of humans via technology is reminiscent of Pulse. I And I had a thought while watching this movie. I was thinking like, Wow, this is like the third Japanese horror movie I've seen where like a um a dead body that's been in the water is being hugged by a beautiful woman. <laughs> <That's> like the- <laughs> but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. A, a lot of hugging of uh wet dead bodies. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't ever seem to I always think it's gonna be a healing moment or something, but it never yeah. really seems in a way, to We'll get into it. We'll get into it. All right. (laughs) So I'm just going to go paragraph by paragraph, um, and then we can talk about it. Okay. 
While out at a pub with friends, Yoko, Oza, Yoko Okazaki misses a call on her cell phone, but the caller ID says it's from herself. She and her friend Yumi Nakamura listen to Yoko's voice message dated two days into the future where she says it's starting to rain, followed by a horrendous scream. Two days later, Yumi receives a call from Yoko and realizes that Yoko is on the same routine as the voicemail. Yoko screams as she is violently thrown off an overpass onto a speeding train. Her severed hand is seen dialing a number. Although authorities assume suicide, her schoolmates recall similar deaths that were preceded by voicemails. Yoko's boyfriend, Kenji Kawaii, tells Yumi he got a voicemail from himself dated two days after. Kenji dies, and a red jawbreaker candy falls out of his mouth as the phone dials another number by itself. I love the beginning scene. I think... uh, just all the friends hanging out um, at this restaurant with like the hot pot and stuff. I don't know. It's like, I, <laughs> this, this made more sense to me of them. Um, I don't know. It just kind of like, I just felt like I got like a sense of all the vibes a lot better with this opening. Cause in the remake, I literally had to watch the first 10 minutes over again. Cause I was like, what is going on? Cause like they just put in so much backstory randomly without any context whereas this one it just sets up here's some friends yeah, right. the American one yeah. Was like, here's a party and this person was dating this person and then that person's friend died apparently yeah and, and her cat which i thought was hilarious but I oh was my like, god i love that and also so that was so one of the, i'll point this out that was one of two moments where i laughed out loud watching the american i did too <laughs> I, I thought it was so <laughs> strange like how um <laughs> Leanne's friend Shelly, um, the girl who dies yes. and with her cat, it's like she's yes. in like a Japanese garden and like she right. lives yeah. in like a, a Japanese pond. house. A yeah, but it's like uh-huh. the whole they just only took that from you know like the the setting from the first. And I just was like, but you're not going to explain it at all. Like, <laughs> she's like she looks like she's in Japan. <laughs> That's actually a good point because I thought she was in Japan, and then I didn't even think about it until. Just now, when you're now that you're saying something, that's what was it is weird. Yeah, it's bizarre. Love that cat though. The cat was a very interesting <laughs> touch. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that kind of thing before. I mean, I've seen killers kill people's pets, right? But it was almost like an afterthought, like, like and I'll okay, you too, because <laughs> yeah, it pulls they just her wanted the to get a second jump scare in there in case you were prepared for the first one, but you're definitely not going to be prepared for the second one. But it oh, almost felt like a comedic the- beat. It was like, okay, pull Shelly under. It's like, okay, I'll take the cat too. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, okay, well, how about the overpass scene in the original? What did y'all think about that? Loved it. I did too. Yes, I thought it was cool. I really like the sound editing in that of the, like, um, I don't know even what they're called. They're like the iron bars snapping. Mm-hmm. You can hear yeah. those like snap, like the gate. That's a really cool sound. One of many really cool sounds. Yeah, and I mm-hmm. I enjoyed um again, like I just enjoyed the story flow of this part a lot better how you have like the beginning like it, the three oh so not not to give away spoilers already, but it's like over the <laughs> course of the movie the people who are cursed with this grow increasingly each time grow increasingly more scared of it, whereas like she's the first one and she's just like what voicemail i don't even remember that like um because the main character is like hey um isn't it about that time when you know you got that call and she's like what (laughs) and i just think that's really i like that because then you know stark contrast by the end when it's like oh my god every second feels like a year because i know i'm gonna die um and yeah and she's just so carefree she's like i think i'm gonna a swimsuit because kenji likes likes girls who go to the beach or something you know and then yeah she's thrown off and it's very violent too like yes seeing her severed arm i like i don't have i i believe that there can be good horror movies without gore but it just is so odd to me to take this one which had an r rating and then sanitize it to make a yeah, movie yeah it because the the r-rated 
scenes are great <laughs> in this movie. Yes. Well, just the, well, we'll get to it in a minute. But the exorcism scene, I think, was the big. That was much tamer in the American yeah. one. <laughs> I had to watch that one over because I liked it so much. <laughs> but that was two. Yeah, there were two really main great. differences I, I looked at on watching the American one today. That I, I noticed immediately before I even hit the play button. I noticed that the American one's PG-13. The Japanese one was R. And I also noticed that the Japanese one was 113 minutes and the American one was 87 and you felt it like <laughs> and it feels like it is oh. it is going at a very yeah. quick pace i'm like oh, okay we're here already yeah. <laughs> i did not yeah i i noticed and like honestly that was my Powerful. favorite part of the american one not to make like a fucking zinger but like it was over soon <laughs> and it's like okay now i'm done watching this movie <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay so um let's see kenji kenji dies by the elevator um what do you think about this death and, and his his feeling right before it happens i again i feel like it's it's a cool like next step from uh the first girl being like what and i don't even remember and then this guy kind of being like that's stupid though like it's not real you know and right. he's like trying to bargain but you can tell himself. he's still scared yeah 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 like he's definitely yeah. like scared it's happened once before yeah. And we all I, saw how that turned out. I also thought this was interesting. I've also seen a lot of Japanese movies, and maybe this was just another homage, but it just seems like anytime that you want to know about the lore of a curse, find a group of uh, high school girls and ask them what they know. <laughs> um, because that's the same thing that happens in, um, what is it? Uh, yeah, Ringu is where, yeah, the, the main reporter lady is just like talking to a bunch of, but again, it feels like I get it. You know, they're kind of like, oh, hey, what are you talking about? Like, okay, tell us more. But these girls had like a wealth of knowledge. They were like, okay, well, here's where it started. Um, this is what it is. And we know so-and-so got a call from this. I was like, whoa, how do they know all this? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to move on to the next part, um, and I believe at the end of this next part is where where we have the exorcism. But, but I if feel not, like you'll... we we I can. I feel like we can talk also about this before the because like the exorcism is going to take its it should be its own thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really was great. Okay, so Yumi meets Hiroshi Yamashita, a detective who has been investigating the curse that also claimed his sister Ritsuko. Yamashita shares that the next victim is called one minute after the previous death and that the victims have red jawbreakers in their mouths. Their investigation leads them to a hospital, which has since changed its building and number. Yumi recognizes a sound she heard before Kenji's death, a spritz from an asthma inhaler. They trace the autopsy records to a girl named Mimiko Mizunuma, who had died from an asthma attack, with her mother Marie going missing. Ritsuko's journal shows that whenever Mimiko had an attack, her sister Nanako would suffer some injury at the same time. They suspect Munchausen syndrome by proxy, where a parent purposefully makes a child sick so she can take care of her and be praised for it. Yumi's friend Natsumi also becomes a victim and dies. <laughs> Yumi gets cursed voicemail and reveals to Yamashita that her mother abused her as a child. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> right, uh, where should we jump in? So wait, hold on. Can you what was the beginning of that again? Yumi meeting Yamashita, the detective. Okay. And his sister was a victim and this <laughs> this part in the in the remake when they're <laughs> when the detective is like because i mean it's a similar story in the remake of like oh detective his sister died he wants to find out and he's talking to margaret tro police chief 
Police Chief Margaret Cho. Is that Margaret Cho? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't yeah. even realize that. Yeah, and Holy he's like, crap. <laughs> she's like, isn't it obvious that these deaths are connected? They all have these red jawbreakers. And she's like, you mean three kids eating candy? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Like, what kind of bad investigation being like, yeah, I know all three of these people died with red, specifically this type of red jawbreaker. Specifically red spherical jawbreakers. Kids are eating candy. What is that? What's so weird about that? Because, like, at least in the Japanese one, it just kind of feels more like these cops are like, yeah, it's probably something. But, like, it's easier to say that it was a suicide. So, like, who cares? Whereas, like, Margaret chose, like... Well, it's, it's you know kids. <laughs> it's nothing. It's kids. Like, yeah, and the guy's yeah. like, my right. sister died. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also very much don't. Okay, I really liked what was called the Japanese version, but it suffers from a similar thing that Ringu did to me, which is the guy it just like. There, there's like the the woman who this is all happening to, and we get all of her fear and trauma, and then the guy who gets to do all the cool shit. Because like, I I I really realized it too because I watched the remake first. Like that Beth, the main character in that one, gets to do all the cool shit herself, you know. But and the detective is kind of like more of a side thing. But like sometimes the detective in this movie becomes the main character, and like he's just doing it. And I kind of liked it better with uh. Uh, the female main character doing it. It just feels like she was kind of infantilized sometimes. Let's see. So we get this this story. So Ritsuko, the sister, um, took care of Namiko and Nanako. Is that right? I think so. She worked at the we, hospital. Oh, she worked at the hospital. Okay. So, yeah. So we think at this point in the movie that the mother um, abused the kids. Abusing the kids, and, yeah. And the older daughter died of an asthma attack. Right. Uh, we'll learn differently later. Well, she did die of an asthma attack. I mean, that part's true. <laughs> well, she did die of an asthma attack. That's true. <laughs> but there's more to it. Right. Yeah. Which I like. I like the little twists. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, Natsumi is the person who is involved in the seance. And there's this whole sequence in the film involving this televised um, exorcism. So and good. It is really like a work of art. <laughs> yeah. It, it should be in the MoMA. Like, and it, I really enjoyed too how ruthless the camera people were. Like, when they, because they first accost Natsumi, um, like, I guess near their like dorm or whatever. And, um, like, this actress does such a good job. Like, she just looks so, because I mean, she knows she's going to die soon, and she looks right. so terrified, and the guys are just like, get the camera on her, you know, like, and like, this guy's like manhandling her. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, her friend is like, hey, can, like, stop. And um, they, they, they had broken uh, their her phone, and these guys, oh, g- give her a new one. Here, yeah, they like, you're going to die, her aren't you? phone into her hands. It's so, like, it's fucked Real up. Real to one point in a uh, sense. Yeah. Yeah, it is fucked up. You're right, though. This movie also made me really nostalgic for flip phones because every oh, character had a great flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorite things is this horror movie all built around Nokia flip phones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and so poor, poor Natsumi, she's now, yeah, the next stage of like, oh shit, I'm going to die. Like, hey, I've got no other option. I guess I'll go with these these TV exorcists. Um. And then the scene when they're actually recording right. it is like, great. I don't like see there's, any harm in it. yeah, yeah. And I love, like, I I love just the way that they do the whole um, TV scene because it's like for her, this is like literally in her mind, obviously, and will be the end of her life. But to them, it's just like, oh yeah, put put her here. All right, you go. You know, and they they have like a commercial break while she's waiting to die. Like it's crazy. All the guys are getting all set up. They're like, let's go to break. Yeah. And if and it was me. The actual, you know, the moment. Yeah. <laughs> where it all comes, where it all passes is like very brutal. Yeah. Like bones, bones breaking and everything. I couldn't believe. Yeah. So, oh, oh, and the, the cool thing about impressive. hers too was uh, instead of like the voicemail, she had like a photo and the photo yes. moved. And the photo moves creepily. Yeah. And of course you see that. And then, of course, in the American one, it's just like, what? Is, I don't even know what it is. 
Is it just handprint indentations around her neck? No, like the hands inside. It's like or is under it her skin. Her I, couldn't, I couldn't tell. Okay. Yeah. In the American one, it's like because she doesn't have a phone, I guess it like just does CGI like hands under the skin. Oh, also, we didn't mention like the American, like, like the, the people who have the curse, they like have these hallucinations. And in the American one, it was just like kooky. Like one was like of a woman pushing a stroller. Um, she's like really creepy. Well, kind of cool, but you're right for the most part. Well, it's most like of them I, are just yeah. random centipedes. I think that <laughs> like some of the visuals are really cool, but they and I I got why they did them, but it still was like I don't know if this makes sense. <laughs> I do want to point out though on the American for the exorcism, or if, anyway, technically before the exorcism. To see my face light up when Ray Wise shows up as the television producer, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> I completely forgot because I had not seen this movie since theaters. I saw this in theaters with my older brother, mm -hmm. and I hadn't seen it since then, and I didn't know who that was. I hadn't seen Twin Peaks. <laughs> then Ray Wise shows up, and I was like, Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that definitely cheered me up. Yeah, that's like a little bright spot in the movie. <laughs> so yeah, the the seance ends with. The time coming and um, uh, uh, poor Spoiler Natsumi. Alert, she dies just like she was supposed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and she like the ghost. There's a ghostly hand that like grips her hand and then like snaps her hand back, and then she starts like <clears throat> like convulsing and having all these like wild bones breaky thing. And I just was not expecting for her damn head to come off. Yes, which was great. Yeah, but yeah, so the seance was definitely fun yeah you know air, air quotes fun mm -hmm. <laughs> as much fun as it is to watch someone get decapitated by their own arm i guess is what happened yeah <laughs> yeah that's kind of what it looks like what's also important in this section of the film is that we get the backstory of yumi that she was abused by her mother and that i guess her father now i, I might be mixing these movies up. Yeah, in the Japanese one, it was her grandmother. So she discovers her grandmother has hanged herself. Yes. Um, yeah, and her mother, like, makes her look at that. Through yeah, that's one of the parts that I kind of like, that's a little far-fetched. I mean, you just, why don't you just make her, like, accidentally? I mean, that's so grim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the, the mom was truly, like, next level. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna put cigarettes out on you, and, like... <laughs> I don't know, berate you or whatever, and your only salvation. Look, yeah, it's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked up, man. Yeah, it's yeah. like so fucked up. Yeah, it's so demented. But at this point in the movie, we think there's a connection about abusive mothers. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. so let's. Which was the one thing I like about the movie is the whole theme. Right, the whole theme is child abuse. And how it's cyclical, and in fact, the whole basically theme of the movie is summarized in the first, honestly, like twenty-five minutes of the movie when she's in the <laughs> college class. Yeah, and the college professor call, calls her out for not paying attention. He's like, "Hey, what's this? What's this lesson all about?" And she's like, "Yes, oh, uh, 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 uh abuse begets more abuse." And yeah, he's like, "Yep, yeah, basically, <laughs> <laughs> that's the theme of the movie." <clears throat> Statistically, if you were abused as a child, which is true, by the way. Statistically, if you were abused as no. a child, you're more likely to display um, abuse as an adult. Not to say that all people who are abused as children... Correct, I'm just saying what the statistics yeah. show. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, at an orphanage, Yamashita meets Nanako, who is unable to talk, but has a teddy bear that plays the same song as the ringtone. At the abandoned hospital, Yumi is haunted by the spirit of Mimiko. Her cell, me her cell messages her that she will die in one minute. Yamashita finds an arm clutching an active cell phone and stops its call. After the minute elapses, Yamashita uncovers a crate holding Marie's body, the mother of Mimiko and Nanako. It comes to life and Yumi sees her own abusive mother in Marie. She tearfully embraces her, apologizing for leaving, and Marie's body returns to a corpse. I love me a corpse that's been sitting in water. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I just like, 
I like any time a movie has a ghost or a spirit or anything. It's not evil. It's just trying to communicate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like the mother, you know, kind of like Sixth Sense, right? He's, he's terrified of all these ghosts until he realizes they're just trying to tell everybody that, hey, I was murdered. I wasn't killed. You know, it wasn't an accident. Yeah. Uh, I really yeah. like that every time that happens. I do too. I loved the skin sloughing off her face. <gasps> yes. Thank you. So and a good. little part I, of hair. I got that. It was like, like can this we might talk have been about fetuses and much, jars can, but... can we talk about that oh the jars oh yeah <laughs> oh my god the jars. jars that is something i wanted to talk about i wanted to talk about just incredible scene random random like what five minutes of <laughs> a white hand pushing little jars with fetuses around the corner That's it's so it. weird they, they, they never they never bring it up <laughs> yeah i love it and like the sound of the oh, no of i the... love it yeah like the, the sound of the jar like grating on the floor mm-hmm. is just like Oh, it was so good. One of the reasons that I keep watching it because I keep trying to find the symbolism there. Maybe there isn't any. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, I'd be I'd be fine if it was just like, isn't this creepy? Because like, yeah. yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the end of this movie and then we can just trash the remake. Okay. Yumi goes home and Yamashita <laughs> visits Nanako at the orphanage. I thought that was kind of a sweet part. Actually. I thought that too. This Numa videotape that Yamashita found reveals that Marie did not abuse her children. Instead, Mimiko abused her sister. The tape shows her cutting Nanako, then suffering an asthma attack. Marie found out the truth and rushed Nanako to the hospital, leaving Mimiko to die. Nanako tells Yamashita that she would get a candy from Mimiko if she stayed silent. Yumi is haunted by Mimiko in her home, playing out the same events her voicemail showed. When Yamashita arrives, he finds Yumi normal, but is stabbed by her when they embrace and sees Yumi appearing as Mimiko in the mirror. After a dream where he helps the dying Mimiko with an inhaler, he wakes at a hospital where a possessed Yumi feeds him a candy with her mouth and smiles, revealing that Mimiko has found a, quote, a new Nanako in Yamashita to care for. This is such like a, there's like, this is just a lot. Like, I like that, or maybe, I feel as though they did this, but I was just going to say, you you can't leave your kid to die of an <laughs> asthma attack. Like you, Holy there's- fuck. There's no, um, that's not okay. <laughs> and like, like, listen, I'm not saying you should become a ghost and kill people who aren't even involved, but I get why that spirit would be angry. Cause it's like, yeah, the kid needs therapy not to die from asphyxiation. Jesus. Good point. Well, I think that like, technically she wasn't like suffering from an asthma attack until she, the mother left. Like she didn't know, but she was like, fuck you, I'm out. And then no. I think she back. knew. I think she knew. No, she knew. Because she, she there's knew. like a moment where she's like um, looking Mimiko at Mimiko was like, yeah, Mimiko's like, like oh, maybe writhing you're right. on the maybe bed. You're right. Her yeah, mouth and the is mom's blue. just sort of like, uh, you might be right. deuces. Yeah. Because I think I think in the American one, she'd already left the room. Yeah, in the American one, but you she does right. close and remember. lock the door. In the American one, like she locks, she locks the girl in her own room. And yeah, I guess that I, that that's a little bit less, you right. know, like liability. She maybe. To have an asthma attack. Yeah, but it is like okay, but if you know your kid has really bad asthma and you're just gonna lock him in a room. Um, also, okay, how how many times did that kid get stabbed and the mom didn't notice? Like, she's like, so it was you, and it's like, wait, so you yeah, had it? Oh yeah. In both movies, they say it was you all along, and I'm like, like who yeah. else could it be? <laughs> the kid is not self harming. Yeah. So yeah. So there's three. There's three people in the house. You didn't do it, and the kid didn't do it. I don't know. Was it the other one? <sighs> not the dead grandma. Not certainly not the dead grandma. <laughs> okay, I don't know why, but the part about uh, Mimiko giving Nanako candy really creeped me out Uh like that seemed real to me like that's somebody's story Mm. um do you know what i mean it Mm. it or maybe like a mother you know did it to a kid but um whoa it's because she just sort of like 
innocently says it. Yeah. Mimiko would always give me. Yeah, candy. That was to, I was just about to and point then, that out. That's one of my one of my favorite parts. Is she's got like almost a smile on her face. She was like, "Well, she always gave me candy. It's fine." Yeah. Yeah. It's so <laughs> creepy to me. Yeah. Like Which out is, of everything, yeah, very, very that like, discerning. creeped me out. Yeah. Um. Definitely discerning. There's there's a so there there's just like this is just a little bit of a difference, but in the American one when they go back to talk to the little girl to find out where, if she knows where her mom is. Um, first it's the male detective being like, where's your mom? And then the lady at the foster place is like, she hasn't talked in forever. And even though right. she has just heard that, um, Beth looks at the clock, like kind of looks at her watch and is like, and runs over to the kid and is like, where's your mom? And it just seems so out of character for this like character. And then I realized why, because in the Japanese one, it's just the detective who does that both times, which makes sense that he would just right. be like frustrated and be like, please. And then it's really nice because he's like, listen, okay, wait, I was wrong. I shouldn't yell at a child. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in the American right. one, I just remember he being apologizes. so like, Beth like why is she suddenly being like listen kid you better fucking tell me where your mom is like this <laughs> this like character whose whole point is that like she has sympathy for like kids getting abused because she it just makes no sense that she would just like slap yeah. a kid across the face tell me where your mom is <laughs> well andy you did not like this ending why is that well yeah so this is the second time i laughed out loud watching this movie <laughs> was because uh, we, I talk, I've talked about this with friends of mine before, how all modern horror movies, no matter how good or bad they are, they always seem to end, I'm talking like Conjuring, Insidious, that, those kind of movies, they always end with a ghost in a room, shouting, glass flying everywhere, big storm, and everything, and everything just gets crazy out of nowhere, and that's exactly what happens here, yeah. is... You know, during the killings, nothing too out of the ordinary was, you know, apart from the actual killing itself. But, like, then all of a sudden, the ghost shows up. It's in person. There's glass breaking everywhere. There's, like, a hurricane inside a room out of nowhere. The, the ghost of the mother shows up out of nowhere and, like, kills the, the detective. evil spirit, I guess. I'm not exactly sure what happened. No, no, no. So, like, the uh, detective's oh. already dead. Okay, right. Okay. The detective gets stabbed in the face. We're talking about the, the American door one. busts open. Yeah, this is all open. this is all the yeah, American. Yeah, No, no, the okay, let's, let's back up yeah, for a second. How, how did you feel about the ending of the Japanese movie? Oh, I like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. Because for, for the exact exact reason I'm talking about is it wasn't a giant spectacle with, you know, glass flying everywhere. It was very subtle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and creepy and you weren't sure the whole time you're like okay so is she gonna die is she not gonna die i'm not exactly sure is she in the house the ghost is she in the house what's happening and yeah. then the detective gets stabbed and i'm like and that's when you know they you see her he sees the young girl as yeah, mimiko yumi she's mimiko right yumi. he sees yumi as mimiko yeah. in the mirror. <laughs> exactly yeah. i forget the names cool. i just i, I just call them the there's like the girl, and then there's the young girl, and the baby girl, <laughs> the really young girl. But yeah, and that's when you're like, okay, so so she's possessed. Got it. What'd you say? I was just gonna say that like this kind of that very 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 end is kind of ambiguous mm. in that like I mean it's pretty clear that she's still like possessed, right? And that it's not yeah. over, but you're not exactly sure like what's gonna happen next, right? You're not sure like okay, so what happens next? And Takashi Miike does that all the time. All the endings of all his movies are like kind of ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I really like the That's ending to the Japanese one because it, well, it makes you think because you're like, oh, okay, so this guy's in a lot of trouble, and um, this male character has had like a very assertive role this whole movie. Um, I will say I do think that the American detective and Beth had a lot better chemistry. Um, to me, as like perhaps romantic potential than uh, Yumi and and the detective, because the detective's like man grabbing her arm, taking her places. Whenever he's like, like when when he sees her birds, he's like, "Who did it to you?" Like it's just so like gee, calm the fuck down. Um, and so it's interesting then to see him <laughs> be at the ultimate like, I don't know, like the most vulnerable he could be mm. um, with this like woman standing over him, kind of like. I'm going to ruin your life, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I really like that. 
Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the American one, sure, you, you know something bad's going to happen because, I mean, they fucking, like, kiss on the stoop. And then she's like, I'm going to go to sleep now. And it's like, okay, so one of you is going to die. Um, and uh, I, I thought it was interesting, too, because this time – the when Beth is hugging the the mom, uh, the deceased mom, she's like, "This one's like a woman who's been burned." Um, and then the first and the Japanese one, it's it's uh, yeah, decaying in water. But like the scene, I will say, I think in the American one, the the scene where like the mom is like crawling towards Beth, like um, as her little zombie self, that was really scary. So, what if we rate this in Jawbreakers? Yes. Sure. Okay, so how many jawbreakers would you give the Japanese version? I mean, I personally give it a solid four. I just love it. I've seen it like three, four, five times maybe. I'm not exactly sure why. It just always creeps me out. And I like the underlying theme and that the, that theme is present throughout the whole movie. Mm -hmm. right? The theme of like child abuse and how it's cyclical and how the main character main character experienced it just like the, the uh, little girl did forget what her name was but i like that they keep that and it's strong there are of course some problems with it yeah i i i agree i would also give it four jawbreakers i feel like yeah i can't give it five because it's there's some things that i would like to be different but on the whole it's great and um i don't know like i had times where like i legit jumped sometimes and like yeah, I really loved it. Okay, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't love this movie. Why? Um, I told Andy the other day, it's like a kitchen yep. sink situation. There's just too much going on in this movie. You've got possession, you've got ghosts, you've got uh, mommy issues. You've got, <laughs> like, there's just so much going on in this movie. you got Final Destination stuff going on and I don't know. I, I, I didn't like it. Okay. So we've talked a lot about the remake already. Wait, mom, how many uh, jawbreakers? Oh, three. Oh, okay. Three. I was going to give it two and a half, but now the remake, it was directed by Eric Vallette. Um, Shannon Sassaman played Beth and Edward Burns played Detective Jack Andrews. Ray Wise, the great Ray, Ray Wise played Ted Summers. <laughs> I mean, that was a delight to see him. I have to say, and then saying, Margaret Cho uh, was Mickey. Face lit up when I saw him. <laughs> yeah, he is. I am always happy when he shows up. So this, the remake now was not screened for critics. That's never a good sign. <laughs> um, as of February twenty twenty one, the film holds a zero percent approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, based on eighty one reviews, with an average rating of two point five out of ten. Also earning the site's Moldy Tomato Award for the worst reviewed film of 2008. Wow. Wow, because I couldn't help notice that it got like a four and a half stars on Amazon. Oh, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, out of ten? Um, no, out of five. So. Oh. On Amazon. Well, we know from How Did This Get Made that you can find a five-star review of everything, if anything. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> but, um... It is rated the second worst film of the 2000s decade behind Ballistic X, X versus Sever. <laughs> Have you seen I it, Andy? This. I've not <laughs> seen it, but I know of its reputation of being god awful. <laughs> Can I mention uh, one thing I forgot about the American that made me laugh like out like so hard was when Beth enters the hospital. There's just a random porcelain baby like with a cell phone. Like with oh, a flip yeah, phone. Funny. Like she enters this room and this baby's just like, haha, and has a flip phone. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think was the best death? And what do you think was the worst death? I think that Kenji could have had a better death because yeah. he just was, kind of, I would say, worst death for him because he just kind of was like, now he's gone. And then he's, you know, um, but I do like, I do really like right before that, when the elevator opens up, how it's not, like, you can kind of see a very slight tinge of red, like, it almost looks like a portal to hell in there. Yeah, it looks I weird. Did, There's something weird about 
the inside of the elevator the minute the door opens up. But apart from that, I agree with you. It is kind of just like he's there and then he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Yeah. I like the like question of like, like, um, if they could have had like a hand come out or something like that, it's just yes. like he's just gone. Like he's he is not yeah. in existence. Coolest death. Come on, got to be the seance. Yes, of course. I, I mean, mean, yeah. There is so a you're... seizure warning though if you're going to watch that movie. <laughs> oh, is it like the flashing scene. flashing lights? Yeah, a lot of flashing lights in that scene. Why don't we rate the remake? <laughs> we can use John Bikers again. I think I think I liked it better than maybe you guys did, and definitely more than the public apparently did. <laughs> because I, I liked, on one hand, I liked the fact that it's very similar to the original. They keep the theme of child abuse intact. So I like that. On the other hand, I don't like the fact that it is almost exactly the same as the original. Like beat for beat, mm -hmm. you got the first mm -hmm. death is she gets thrown in front of a train. You got the, I guess the second death is not falling down an elevator. He gets failed by a piece of rebar, which I thought was weird. Yes. They, they should, they should yeah. just, I, I get what they were doing where they were like, he's going to get hit by a car. And then they, they throw you for a curve and there's a random explosion that kills him with a piece of rebar. They should just have him got hit by the car. That would have been <laughs> more, first of all, more realistic. And then there's an exorcism, just like in the original. There's a piece of metal that flies through a people, just like in the original. It's all, it is like mm -hmm. the exact same. So that I yeah. didn't like. And I didn't like the ending. The ending was stupid as hell. <laughs> How many jawbreakers? At least two and a half. Okay. No more than, no more than three though, for sure. And probably not three, probably two and a half. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend you see it. I'll say that. Just watch the original and you're fine. Mm -hmm. You have to watch the American. How about would... you, Mac? I would give it one and a half. I feel like yeah. I really did not like the performances or the what they did now now because I saw the remake first and then I watched the Japanese one and then just when I saw it's just to me sometimes when you have a great blueprint and then you just like kind of write it down on a napkin and then you make your movie like that, I'm like, why? <laughs> like why not just or I mean why remake it but you know why well, why not at least you it's not hard is it like it's right there um anyway and uh but i will say i did like um some elements like i did like that 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 spooky burned mom crawling up to her in the <laughs> vent and i i liked uh I liked the chemistry that Beth had with with the detective and that Beth got to do some more badass things um but on the whole, I would not recommend it to anyone unless you could be there opening night. Like if I could have been there with teenagers on opening night who were screaming, now that would have been. I think that maybe, this movie's perfect for that. Maybe that's why I liked it because I saw it in the theaters when I was 18 or 19. I think that would make me like it more. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what about I you, think Mom? I would also give it – I think I would also give it one and a half um, Jawbreakers. That's the number that pops into my head. Um yeah, I, I I just wanted it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news, you only have to wait an hour and 20 minutes. And that gone. is true. That is true. That's like Max no, no, absolute, uh, no. That's like Max sweet spot, right? Yeah. You're so. done. Barely a feature film. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the sequel. Oh, that's oh. right. I'm sorry. So I've seen yes. this call too. I bought <laughs> yeah. a box set at a local like used DVD shop once. And I watched both of them. And so right out the gate, let me say, don't watch the second one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if I'm really honest, I would watch the American remake again before watching the second one again. Whoa. Not that it's like god awful. It's not terrible, but it's just like, why? They try to retcon the whole first one. It's kind of the same idea of like Conjuring 2 versus Conjuring 1. Is they try to like explain everything that happened in the first one. Mm. I'm like, why? And like, they try to show that, oh, it didn't start with Mimiko. It actually dates back to even this other girl in Taiwan that got murdered brutally for, like, very little reason. It makes very little sense. And, yeah, so it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch it. Well, really that's good. good to know. The only thing I like about it is that the, I don't know if you guys remember, not the, the, the detective from the original one. I know you know who that is, but. You remember his boss in the original one? 
Yeah. Kind of the, the older guy, right? Like the chief. Yeah. The bald guy. Yeah. Yes, the bald guy. He's in a lot of Takashi Miike movies. So I, I know him. And he plays a bigger role in the second one. So, I did like him in this it, movie. I, I specifically thought he's got a really great commanding voice. I'm playing yes. uh, Yakuza Zero right now. And there's just a lot of like tough sounding dudes in that game. And like <laughs> that guy sounded tough. The police chief did. Yes. He is in another Takashi Miike movie called Gozu, which I want to recommend. But it's also one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. So, <laughs> But anyway. So yeah, skip the second one. Just watch the first one. Just watch <laughs> the Japanese one. Don't watch any of the other stuff. Do watch everything Takashi Miike makes them. Yeah. That dude's great. Yeah. Andy, do you have a Twitch stream that you would like to promote? I don't have a Twitch stream, no, but you can follow me on Twitter at Abby Yoyo. That's A B I Y Zero Y Zero. <laughs> I love that's it. My, that's my only plug, though. Um. I can't believe Andy. Thinking, I can't believe you don't have a Twitch stream. No, I mean yeah, technically, I guess one. I have one, but I haven't streamed in like months. I was streaming Fall Guys when that first oh. came out. <laughs> okay. I need to get back on it though. Mom's like, "What's Fall Guys?" I I know you guys could say anything. I mean, you could make <laughs> you could make a bunch of shit up, and I okay. <laughs> I don't know anything about that world, um, but I currently I went back and I'm playing my uh, I could call it my soul my soul game like my soul food and I'm playing Banjo Kazooie again. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so this is game. like I... <laughs> okay, okay, Mac, make something up. Just um, say it like it's real. Honestly, like you like Banjo Kazooie is real, but that's the fakest thing you could think of. Like the fakest sounding <laughs> name, isn't it? <laughs> it sounds so random. It's like Cowboy Be- Rebop or something. Like <laughs> that doesn't sound real. I love no hang on. I love Cowboy Rebop. <laughs> Cowboy Rebop is my favorite. <laughs> what what is it? Bebop. 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 Yeah, you know, like jazz, bebop. I don't know why I thought it was Rebop. I don't know. <laughs> Cowboy Rebox. <laughs> Honestly, if you're not if you're not an anime fan, at least watch Cowboy Bebop. It's only 26 episodes, and it's right up there with some of the best television shows ever. Okay. Even if you don't like anime, I probably won't, but maybe I will. It's great. <laughs> it's so good. My kids did, so maybe I got some through osmosis. You didn't. <laughs> oh. Sorry. We should do me, me, a- me, and. Mac, you and me should just start a anime podcast. We'll, talk about, <laughs> we'll just go. talk about Trigun over and over again. That is a great <laughs> idea, you guys. <laughs> It'd probably be like way more popular than an international horror movie podcast. <laughs> So next week, we're going to look at Somos Lo Que Hay, We Are What We Are, from Mexico, from 2010, and We Are What We Are, from 2013, the American remake. Also featuring With Wyatt, Wyatt Russell. Russell. We love Wyatt Russell. I really love him. Yeah. I think he's great in that Ingrid movie. I mean, he's, 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 he's a great actor. He's just really fun to watch. He was totally robbed when they canceled Lodge 49. That's all I'll say about that. I'm I'm still bitter (laughs) over that. And then we've decided, Wohos, that every fifth episode, we're either going to do a deep dive on a country or a director. And our first director is Kim Ji-un, who has directed several of our favorite movies, not least of which is A Tale of Two Sisters. So stay tuned for that. Yay. Before we go, Wohos, we want to say thank you so much for supporting us. It means the world of horror to us, truly. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And did you want to plug your Twitch stream, Matt? Well, if you're if you're interested in uh, watching this whole this whole thing, um, I'm gesturing at myself. <laughs> Play video games. You can follow me at twitch.tv/slash/thegayjimmybuffett. 
If you like this podcast, please tell all your friends and leave a good review in the places where people leave reviews. If you want to get in touch with us, you can at worldofhorror96 at gmail.com. We love you. Don't go into the basement.